Ahoy there, pirates! A mirror or one falcon, here for Mare Thief. We now know LeChuck has trapped Guybrush in a twisted version of Melee Island. With Guybrush out of the picture, LeChuck can now do as he pleases on the Sea of Thieves. However, with the help of Corinna, we can free Guybrush and work with him to end LeChuck's nefarious plan. To get started, head over to Kate at Capsize Charters on any outpost and vote on the second book next to her to start the quest for Guybrush Tall Tale. During your conversation with Kate, the Pirate Lord will appear and open a portal in a nearby archway to the Sea of the Damned. Sail through the archway and you will teleport to a tunnel of the Damned. This tunnel will take you to Melee Island. Shortly, LeChuck will board your ship and let you in on his plans. If you don't meddle in his affairs and swear an oath to him, he promises to make you a rich and powerful pirate. After LeChuck leaves, your ship will continue to travel through the Tunnel of the Damned until it reaches the end, where you will teleport to Melee Island. Sail toward the island and park your ship by the dock in front of you. While your first order of business is to meet with Corinna, you'll first want to stop by the Scum Bar Kitchen and speak with the chef. Open the door to the scum bar and head to the back where the kitchen is. Approach the chef, talk to him, and he will fire you from your short-lived job as an assistant. Speaking with the chef will unlock the gainful unemployment commendation. After you've been fired, leave the scum bar and go to Low Street, where the International House of Mojo is. Open the door and walk inside to find Corinna waiting for you. She will immediately start talking to you upon entering. Corinna will inform you that she can devise a brew to bring Guybrush to his senses. However, she can only prepare the potion using emblems of true pirate courage. The only way to acquire the necessary ingredients is to undertake the three legendary trials. Now that you've met the legend of Monkey Island, Governor Threepwood, the pirate leaders may be willing to indulge you about the trials. Speak with them in the scum bar. Once inside, go to the back of Scum Bar and talk with one of the three pirate leaders at the long table. Let them know that you've met with the governor and you're ready to undertake the trials. The pirate leaders will then explain each of the trials. You must complete all three trials and provide proof of completion for each. However, before you can start working on the trials, you must clear the fog shrouding the island. Fortunately, Corinna can brew a mystical potion for you that will dispel the mist. Return to the International House of Mojo once more and talk to Corinna. Tell her you have permission from the pirate leaders and she will give you a list of items you must collect before you can start the three trials. Corinna needs you to collect the mighty pirate sword, a rubber chicken, and a treasure map. Once you have them, you will return them to her. Exit the International House of Mojo and turn the corner to your left to talk with Citizen of Melee. He has the treasure map you seek. When you talk to him, Choose the last dialogue option that lets you ask if you can trade for the treasure map. He'll tell you that he's up for a trade, but wants a chart from one of the governor's adventures in return. He also mentions that you might be able to find one on the shelves in the governor's mansion. On your way to the governor's mansion, stop by the general store and speak with the storekeeper. He has the mighty pirate sword and the rubber chicken you need. However, with no pieces of eight, you won't be able to purchase them. Talk to the storekeeper and choose the last dialogue option, asking if he offers credit. You're in luck, he does, and he has some spare notes of credit lying around. If you can get one signed by the governor, he is willing to do business with you. The storekeeper will then add a blank credit note to your quest radial, which you can access at any time. It's now time to make your way to the governor's mansion. Head inside the governor's mansion and inspect the shelves on either side of the staircase on the first floor. There are 12 books that you can interact with and pull out. Pull out each book until you find one titled, The Time I Blew Up LeChuck. Once you find that particular book, examine it, tug on it, and it will fall to the ground. Upon falling, it will reveal Guybrush's signed sea chart. Pick up the sea chart and add it to your quest radial. Then, head upstairs to Guybrush. Once upstairs, walk over to the sleeping Guybrush and pickpocket him. 
you will discover a storage crate key. Turn around and use the key on the small footlocker to the left of the door. Inside the footlocker is a captain's inkwell. Place the inkwell down on the desk and go back downstairs to pick up the writing quill from the table and place that on the desk. You are now ready to forge Guybrush's signature. Equip the credit note from your quest radial and place it on the desk. You can then interact with the note to forge a signed credit note. Pick up the freshly signed credit note and go back to the storekeeper. With the signed credit note in your hand, give it to the storekeeper. He will then let you purchase anything using store credit. Turn to your left and purchase the Mighty Pirate Sword with store credit. After you buy it, equip it from the armory nearby. Then, walk upstairs and purchase the rubber chicken with store credit. Two items down, one to go. Leave the store and go to Citizen of Melee. Equip Guybrush's signed sea chart from your quest radial, approach Citizen, and trade it for the treasure map. After you've traded, you can pick up the treasure map on the ground. Now that you're ready for the three trials, return to Corinna and talk to her. Corinna will then give you a potion that will clear the fog when poured into the fire at Lookout Point. Pick up the potion from her hands and go to the top of Lookout Point. Once you reach the top of Lookout Point, pour the potion into the fire. A mysterious green smoke will flow out of the fire before quickly retreating back into the fire. As it dissipates, the green smoke will light several candles, leading you to the southeast cliff, revealing a clear melee island. Follow the fog-cleared path down Lookout Point to the southeast. Keep descending the mountain switchbacks until you reach the first zip line to your right. Interact with a zipline to slide down to the south side of the raised troll toll bridge. When you land on the ground, turn around to the north and approach the lever to the bridge. Interact with it to lower the bridge, allowing you to cross it. Just after you cross the bridge, you will come to a broken cart with one of Elaine's journals on it. Read it to make progress on the Escape from Melee Island commendation. There are five in total that you need to find. Just behind the broken cart, you will find a lone barrel with an inkwell beside it. This barrel is one of the 10 memoir spots you need to find. Sit on the barrel to take in the view at this memoir spot. From the broken cart, head north along the dirt path, 
until you come to some wooden scaffolding, stairs, and ladders on your left. Walk up the stairs and two ladders until you come to a platform with several barrels and another journal written by Elaine. Read the journal to make progress on the Escape from Melee Island accommodation. After reading the journal, climb down the two ladders and stairs and continue north until you come across a lit beacon, two spooky dead trees, and a ghostly apparition of Guybrush walking into the forest on your right. We'll be starting with the Trial of Treasure Huntery, so if you're working on one of the other two trials, check out the timestamps in the description to skip ahead. Equip your quest book and flip to the last two pages with the treasure map. You must follow five steps on the map through the forest to discover the treasure. Time to do the monkey. You are already at the first step, the forest gate, as depicted by the two dead trees and lit beacon. Next, walk through the forest gate. Take your first right and continue along the path. Cross the log bridge and keep walking until you get to another ghostly apparition of Guybrush. From here, take a sharp left and walk to a camp with another ghostly apparition of Guybrush. Walk past the camp and cross the second log bridge. Continue to walk through the forest until you reach a grove of yellow flowers and another ghostly apparition of Guybrush. At the grove of yellow flowers, walk towards the torch and then turn left to find a wooden sign with a tree. You will also find a ghostly apparition of Guybrush digging. Dig in front of the sign where Guybrush is to discover the chest of treasure huntry. Open the chest and pick up the directions of legendary treasure huntry. You will add the directions to your quest book. Equip the quest book and flip to the pages you just picked up you will find that there is more treasure hunting to do. However, before you continue the trial of treasure huntery, you'll want to find another memoir spot and journal. From the chest you just dug up, turn around and face the nearby torch. Just left of the torch is a small rock and a nearby inkwell. Sit on the rock to take in the view of this memoir spot. Stand up from the memoir spot and walk south past the torch, but don't walk too far. Stop before the grove of yellow flowers and turn left. Then, walk down the dirt path leading south by southeast. You'll reach a dead end, but you will also find the second journal on the ground, lying against some rocks at the base of a tree. Read the journal to make progress on the Escape from Melee Island accommodation. It's time to get started on the next treasure map. Similar to the first Trial of Treasure Huntery map, there are five steps you need to follow before you can dig up the chest. This map will take you around the forest to a fishing camp. Make your way back to the forest gate. You can retrace your steps or jump in the water to swim back to the forest gate. Once you're there, face west and you will see a small wooden structure. Walk towards it to discover the artist's shack. 
From the shack, face north and walk to the lone post with a lantern straight ahead. Once you reach the post, turn right and walk north by northeast until you reach a fallen scarecrow on your left. Look for the daggers in front of the scarecrow and take note of the direction they point. Follow the direction until you reach a wooden wagon. From the wagon, face east and walk between the two large dead trees. Keep walking down the hill until you come to a fishing camp. Take note of the fishing rod on the table. Dig just below the fishing rod's hook to discover another chest of treasure huntry. Open the chest and pick it up for more directions. Then, equip your quest book and flip to the pages you just picked up. You'll find the next part of the trial. Just like the first two maps, there are five steps you need to follow before you can dig up the chest. Walk back up the hill and through the two dead trees. Face east by southeast down the path you have yet to take. Walk down that path until you reach a small bumpy bridge. Continue walking down the path to the south until you get to a tree with a lantern. As the tree's lantern suggests, take the path to the right and continue walking south. You will keep walking south until you eventually walk into a clump of trees with a camp in the middle. From the camp, Look for the bright lights on a building off in the distance to the southwest. Walk towards the bright lights, but stop at the first lantern post you reach. At the post, turn right to the west. You should see a large tree. Walk to the tree to find it has a heart carved into it. This heart carved tree is the tree you're looking for. Dig at the tree's base to discover another chest of treasure huntry. Open the chest and pick up more directions. Equip your quest book and flip to the pages you just picked up. You will find the last part of the trial. You need to follow five more steps before you can dig up the final chest. From the tree with the carved heart, walk southwest to a zip line. Use the zipline to cross the water. Once you reach the other side, equip your spyglass and look down over Stan's previously owned vessels. You will find six triangle flags strung up by rope. Make your way down to the flags. Walk past Stan's previously owned vessels to the north until you get to a bridge and some fish skeletons. If you still need to lower the bridge, use a nearby lever to drop it.
Walk across a bridge to the broken cart to your left. From the cart, turn to your right, and you should see a burning light through a shallow rock tunnel. Walk through the rocks towards the light and stand at the base of the torch. Equip your shovel and dig at the torch's base to discover the golden chest of legendary treasure. Open the chest and pick up the trophy of legendary treasure huntery. Congrats on completing your first trial. Krina will then appear through a small portal when you pick up the trophy. Give her the trophy and you will unlock a checkpoint and the trial of treasure huntery commendation. All right, pirates, time to take on the trial of thievery. But first, another memoir spot and journal. Walk back across the bridge towards Stan's previously owned vessels. In front of Stan's office is a barrel that you can sit on near a small cage and inkwell. Sit on the barrel to take in the view at this memoir spot. Just next to the memoir spot is a rowboat with a grog vending machine strapped onto it. Behind the rowboat is the fourth of Elaine's journals, sitting on top of a barrel of grog. Read it to make more progress on the Escape from Melee Island commendation. After reading the journal, find Stan just in front of his office. Approach him and he will start talking to you. Once Stan finishes his pitch, you must ask him about four vessels around the shipyard. First, walk up to the white sign next to the grog rowboat with the vending machine and interact with it to ask Stan about it. He will walk over and give you another pitch about the grog rowboat. After his pitch, walk down the dock and ask Stan about the other three vessels. After he gives you his pitch for all four vessels, meet Stan at the front of his office. Once he returns, talk to him and choose a last dialogue option, asking him about the cheapest ship. After he tells you about pricing, choose the new fourth dialogue option, asking who purchased the Headless Monkey. He will then inform you that Meat Hook, who lives on Hook Island, owns the Headless Monkey. Time to make your way to Hook Island, but first, you'll hit another memoir spot on the way. From Stan's previously owned vessels, walk south up the hill towards the zipline. Use the zipline and keep heading east towards the Hook Island sign. Just below the sign is a small rock with an inkwell nearby. Sit on the rock to take in the view at this memoir spot. After you're done, stand up and use the zipline in front of you to make your way to Hook Island. Once on the other side, approach the building, open the door and head inside. You'll find Meat Hook waiting for you. After he finishes talking, talk to him and choose the last dialogue option, saying that you're there about the headless monkey. If you can bring the beast back home and put it in its cage, Meat Hook will give you the bill of sale for the headless monkey. Inside Meat Hook's house, approach the cage and interact with the broken cutlasses around the frame. Remove five broken cutlasses. Then, head outside to the side of his house. You'll find piles of wooden planks you can pick up. Pick them up and repair the cage in three places.
After you've repaired the cage, you need to fix the lever. Go outside and head to the small forest on the east side of the island. You'll find a rare mop tree sapling. Interact with the tree to break off a mop tree stick and bring the stick back to the lever so you can repair it. Meat Hook will then request that you find concentrated banana grease. There are four pieces of furniture inside his house that you can interact with where it might be hiding. Once you find the banana grease, give it to him. Meat Hook will then tell you that you must learn a shanty to tame the beast. The scrap of music is somewhere in the house. Walk upstairs to Meat Hook's bed and interact with his pillow. You'll find the shanty underneath it. Now that you know the shanty, head outside, walk through the forest, and climb up the mountain behind Meat Hook's house. Once you reach the beast's lair, equip any instrument and start to play. Play your instrument until the music cue plays and the beast reveals itself. The beast will then hop down so you can bravely pick it up. Before you put the beast back in its cage, use the primary use button while holding it to interact with the beast and tickle it, unlocking the beast whisperer commendation. After you've unlocked the commendation, take the beast inside the house and place it in the cage. You'll then need to use a lever to seal the beast away. After successfully capturing the beast, Meat Hook will give you the bill of sale for the headless monkey. Before leaving Meat Hook, turn around and sit on the barrel next to the inkwell to take in the view at this memoir spot. With the bill of sale in your quest book, return to Stan's previously owned vessels. 
talk to Stan and tell him that you have the bill of sale for the Headless Monkey. Now that you have the Headless Monkey, it's time to discuss all the extra features that you'll need for your ship. After you talk to Stan about the cannons, wheel, and capstan, you can then talk to Stan about the high quality furnishing options. Keep talking to him until you can ask if you can fit inside the cupboard. Stan will then step inside the cupboard to demonstrate. Interact with it and lock Stan inside. With Stan inside the cupboard, you can interact with it several more times and push it into the ocean, unlocking the Stantastic Voyage Commendation. With Stan out of the way, you can now take Stan's office key from behind the vending machine and open up his office. Inside, you'll find Stan's sales ledger. Pick up the ledger and flip to the last page. You'll find directions on how to open up his safe. You're looking for a phrase like left 2, right 3, left 1, or left 2, right 2, left 3. Interact with Stan's safe in the corner of his office and turn the lever to the left and right as instructed by the ledger. The safe will open up revealing the idol of many hands. Pick up the idol and Karina will appear outside the office. Once you give her the idol, you'll finish the trial, unlock a checkpoint, and complete the Trial of Thievery Commendation. One trial left, the trial of the sword. Before starting it, you'll need to get some pieces of eight from the circus. On the path to the circus, you will find stacked rocks and an inkwell to your left. Sit on the rocks to take in the view of this memoir spot. Continue along the path to the tent and enter it. After the brothers finish talking, talk to Alfredo. The brothers will then tell you about a death-defying routine, the Melee Island Spectacular. If you complete this routine, you will win the pieces of eight that you need. 
Next, speak to Bill and ask why you need a costume. After he tells you why, turn to your left and pick up the circus costume from the blue wooden platform. After you pick it up, return to the brothers and use a nearby clothing chest to equip it. Before you begin the routine, you'll want to go to the cannon on the far side of the tent and line it up so that when you shoot yourself from it, you'll fly through the rings and land in the hot tub. You'll want to make your adjustments now so you don't spend time doing it during the routine. After you line up the cannon, head back towards the brothers to start the performance. Try not to fall during the routine. You'll have to start over if you touch the ground before taking the zip line to the cannon. Once you're ready, ring the circus bell by the brothers and climb the ladder to your right. Once you reach the top, walk over the tightrope and jump across the gaps. Ring the second circus bell and then jump to the platforms to your right to ring a third circus bell. Hop over to the zipline on the platform below and climb into the cannon. Shoot yourself through the flaming rings and land in the hot tub. You will unlock the spectacular superstar accommodation if you're fast enough. To find your time, check the chalkboard next to the brothers. You can try the routine as many times as you like to get a better time after you collect your winnings. Once you complete the routine, talk to Bill to collect your pieces of eight. After many excuses, they will eventually give you 404 pieces of eight. That's fine though, that's all you need to do the trial of the sword. Before leaving the tent, head back to the cannon to find a red barrel with an inkwell nearby. Sit on the red barrel to take in the view of this memoir spot. There's one more combination you'll want to unlock before starting the Trial of the Sword. Leave the tent and walk back across the bridge to Stan's previously owned vessels. Next to Stan's office is a vending machine that takes pieces of eight. Now that you have some, you can purchase a grog. Buy one grog, pick it up, and drink it all. After drinking the grog, you will earn the Yo Ho Ho End Commendation. From Stan's previously owned vessels, walk south up the hill toward Captain Smirk's house just before the zip line. In front of the house is a lone rock with an inkwell nearby. Sit on the rock to take in the view at this memoir spot. All right, time to start the trial of the sword. If you don't have the mighty pirate sword equipped, use the armory on the side of the house to equip it now. With your sword equipped and drawn, knock on the door. Captain Smirk will answer the door. Talk to him and tell him that you can pay for sword training. You will then need to present your sword to him. He will then invite you inside if you have the Mighty Pirate Sword equipped and drawn. Pay Captain Smirk to begin training so he can teach you all about insult sword fighting. During your training, you will need to block and attack the legendary machine as instructed. After blocking and attacking, Captain Smirk will then teach you about insults and retorts and the art of insult sword fighting. Insult sword fighting is a sword fight with an added layer of witty banter. While you will trade blows with your opponent using your cutlass, your main goal is to look for pauses where you can attack with an insult or defend with a retort. Insults and retorts come in pairs. For every insult, there is one correct and corresponding retort. To learn insults and the retorts, you will need to partake in fights around Melee Island. The fighters you battle during these duels will teach you insults and retorts. 
So, if your opponent delivers an insult, stop slashing at them with your sword. Instead, approach and interact with them to respond with the retort. If you choose the correct retort, you will stun your opponent, allowing you to damage them with your cutlass. However, if you select the wrong retort, you will stagger and take damage. Likewise, if you deliver an insult, you will stun your opponent if they don't respond correctly. While stunned, you can then attack them with your cutlass. However, if your opponent does answer with the correct retort, you will stagger and take damage. Three successful landed insults or retorts will grant you a victory in the fight. You'll also want to stay within the fighting area. If you do leave the vicinity, you will forfeit the duel and lose. Back to training, Captain Smirk's first insult will be, My swordplay will amaze you, which you must respond to with a retort. To retort, interact with the legendary machine, and a list of dialogue options will appear. You have yet to learn the corresponding retort, so it doesn't matter which option you choose. Whenever you don't know the retort, you can pick any of the bottom four options. After choosing the wrong retort, Captain Smirk will teach you the correct retort for that particular insult. The next time you hear it, use that retort. He will then teach you another insult. My deeds are spoken of worldwide. Again, you need to retort by interacting with the legendary machine. When the dialogue options show, you will see the retort for the previous insult with a yellow dot next to it. The yellow dot means you still need to use that retort. However, that retort matches the last insult, not this one. So instead, choose any of the other options below. After choosing the wrong one, Captain Smirk will teach you the correct retort. He will then attack you and try one of the insults you know. If it is, my swordplay will amaze you, choose the retort, yeah, I'm amazed you've lasted this long, to win the exchange, allowing you to do damage. Captain Smirk will then let you perform an insult and respond with the incorrect retort, allowing you to do damage. That will conclude the training and Captain Smirk will suggest that you learn as many insults as possible by dueling other fighters. He will then give you a map with red cutlasses on it, showing you where you can find the fights. Before you run off to learn more insults and retorts, sit on the chicken cage in the corner of his house by an inkwell. Sitting on the cage will allow you to take in the view at this memoir spot. After the training from Captain Smirk, you will know two insults and two retorts. You'll need to learn a total of 10 insults and 10 corresponding retorts to continue the trial of the sword. Use the zip line on the northeast side of Captain Smirk's house to cross the water and walk to a nearby lantern post. The lantern will then turn green and Murray will appear from some bushes. He will then tell you spots like this, the lit posts, are great for sword fighting contests. After he's done talking, approach Murray and speak with him to choose a last dialogue option, letting him know you're ready to fight. As you visit each sword fighting spot across Mele Island, expect to lose your first two fights and then win your third. After you win your third, you will lose two more and then win your sixth, and so on, until you learn and use all the insults and retorts. However, don't worry about winning or losing these fights. You're only fighting to learn all the insults and retorts so you can take on the Swordmaster. Keep using insults you haven't used yet so you can learn the corresponding retort from the ghost pirate you're fighting. If they don't respond correctly, you'll need to use that insult again until you learn the retort. Here's a handy image with every insult and its corresponding retort. You can always return here to view them so you can win any sparring of words during your tall tale. We'll also add them in the description below. Once you learn and use every insult and retort, win or lose the fight, Murray will then give you instructions to help you find the Swordmaster. The instructions will be added to your quest book. To challenge the Swordmaster, you'll need to travel through the forest and make your way to the Yellow Flower Grove from the Trial of Treasure Huntery.
Once you reach the Yellow Flower Grove, walk southeast to where you found one of Elaine's journals. Walk behind the nearby sign and interact with it to press the secret switch. The two broken logs will rise, creating the bridge for you to cross. Walk across the bridge and make your way to the Swordmaster. You will suddenly be in a massive fight between LeChuck's guards, Carla, and Captain Smirk. You will also see Ribsy, one of LeChuck's, waiting to fight you. During your fight with Ribsy, you can only defend yourself with retorts. You cannot insult Ribsy, so you only need to worry about your retorts. However, Ribsy has his own unique arsenal of insults. You will need to think on your feet to match your retorts in a way that makes sense to his insults to win the fight. If you need help deciphering which retorts to use for Ribsy's insults, you can use this helpful image here or check out the description where we will have them all listed. After you defeat Ribsy, take Carla's medallion and Corinna will appear. Hand over the medallion and you will finish the Trial of the Sword, unlock a checkpoint, and complete the Trial of the Sword commendation. With your final victory, you've gathered everything Corinna needs to complete the elixir to save Guybrush. However, before you go to Corinna, there is one more memoir spot and journal to get. From Carla's house, turn around and walk across the bridge, but stop at the large stack of rocks to your left. On top of them is a tenth and final memoir spot. Sit on the log bench with an inkwell to take in the view. Exit the forest and head north. Take a left at the lantern post to walk down the back path to the governor's mansion. Along the way to the mansion, you will find the fifth and final journal belonging to Elaine. Read it to complete the Escape from Melee Island Commendation. Head inside the International House of Mojo, and Corinna will begin brewing the potion for Guybrush. Once she's done making it, pick it up and head to the Governor's Mansion. After you reunite with Guybrush, Corinna will appear and suggest that we all take a drink. Give Guybrush the potion, and it will free him from the spell. Now that Guybrush is back in reality, he is ready to track down LeChuck and save Elaine. However, before heading to Monkey Island, he must make amends with the people of Melee Island. While Guybrush handles business on the island, you will sail back to the Sea of Thieves and await further instruction. Before heading back to your ship at the docks, double check that you haven't missed any commendations. If you've been following along, you will have them all unlocked except for the commendations for completing the Tall Tale. Return to your ship and sail through the green portal you entered at the start of the Tall Tale. You will complete the Tall Tale and earn the rewards as soon as you go through the portal. Congrats on completing the second Legend of Monkey Island Tall Tale. Our next stop is Monkey Island. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below. See you on the sea, pirates.